Hello, today uh, it was the EA user group European event in Utrecht, it was pretty cool. And uh, today also Sparks Enterprise Architect 11 Beta was announced. And there is an interesting capability, which is the cloud services. And I have made a, a small test of that. So what we have is when you install the cloud services, you got a Spark System Cloud Services service running into Windows. And this will allow you to access a repository from the web or from the Enterprise Architect client directly. So here, for example, this model is a model I have opened with the Connect to Cloud um, feature. And the cloud connection, I just put a URL and a port and a model name. Here I left username and password blank because it was not uh, configured with any password, no user. If you want to uh, configure this, you have another client, which is the cloud services configuration client. Here, this cloud is a database containing a model. Here you see it's the configuration. You have to check accept queries. You can also specify that it would be a read-only connection. So from there, um, it just runs. This client is sending data to the web service and updates everything. So if you have the services, the service running here, what you can get is you can access the service through an uh, OSLC interface. For example, here on my local box on port 804, which is the one that has been configured for that. On my test cloud model, I can access OSLC SP. And what is this give, going to give me? It gives me all the service provider details, you see. And for example, here, as a service in OSLC, the cloud service offers, um, let's say, requirements management services. And the URL for creating requirements is being OSLC slash CF, uh, which is to be used with a post and you have other URLs and here one is the query capability and you would access the query using QC and there is another thing is what you get back uh, will have a given shape and so the resource shape would be um, described with this URL let's have a look if we go to QC you will get here the requirements that are in there. So you would have a requirement uh, with this GoID. Uh, yeah, and it's a requirement. And this is the title of this requirement. There is no description, but it's inside your model. This, this is the sample requirement. If I put, I guess, some description, in here, I think I will get it back from this if I refresh. Yes, that's here. The creator, I have a number of parameters that are uh, with DC. DC means Dublin Core. It's a, it's a standard for, for these meta things. Now you can also make other queries. You have a select parameter. So for example, I want only to get the title for the requirements, and this is what I get. So if I have a second requirement in here, let's create a second requirement. Well, from, well, yeah, I will just do it from here. So create a requirement, another sample requirement. It's in there. And if I query the titles, I should get both, which is the case. You have other parameters you can use. Then here, you would have a requirement, only one. So if I pick 
this here, you see, this requirement here. If you query this, you would have the detail only for that requirement. So you see RE and the same on this one. So if I pick this URL and then open it, I would get the details of that second requirement. So you can navigate easily between things. So you can also, um, yeah, it's nothing special here. You can also have the RS, which is the resource shape. And you would see that in the various properties for requirements resource, you would have title, which is a property, description, which is a property, identifier, which is a property. Let's try this. If I say, uh, maybe this. Yeah, so we get all the GoIDs, which are here. So it's all metadata driven. It's about uh, RDF, uh, resource description format. And you get all the things like the status. So you would get the status of something. You could get it from here. Oh, yeah, missing. Well, anyway, it's getting late, so resource shape. And you have also another here, which is uh, what, oh yeah. I wanted to uh, show the title and the creator. Uh, so you get the resource and the creator. Let's refresh, so we get, uh, it's for this ID. Okay, so that's not going to, to do anything. Um, if you want to see more about this, you get the help of Enterprise Architect. You search for RSLC. You will see how these things are working. Uh, it's a bit cryptic unless you understand what all these things are, but I guess I gave you enough uh, to get started. Uh, so requirements, there's nothing special here, but then it goes inside details about um, what is a service provider resource and why you get the links and and so on all right that's all for now and uh, i hope you will enjoy your slc just make sure you pay a visit to the website of the specifications you will get all the details in here and there is also a way to paginate i don't know how it works with enterprise architect but we'll have to, to check them. You see that provider should or must, it depends on, on what you support. See here, the standard is in, in there. But OSLC is quite good and will help you bridge your tools together. There has been a presentation available on SlideShare. If you say OSLC and SlideShare, you would end up on this introduction. And yeah. They go through for a couple of slides, and all the blah, blah, blah. But what makes sense is really a bit later. So when you have multiple tools and multiple resources in there, and currently Enterprise Architect 11 offers the beta version coverage for requirements, you will be able to connect things together, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. And you can also ask questions. So this is the light linked life cycle, life cycle data from SLC. And so the requirements management tool can be connected with the change management tools and the life cycle uh, tool and also for, for change management and for quality management, even in separate tools. So it's quite interesting for, for connecting things together. Um, and it's also using everything that's in the semantic web from uh, RDF. Okay, so just pay a visit to that presentation to help you. And so this is a set of very nice features. Um, what the cloud services do for you is that you don't have to install a database driver for each client anymore. So you are done with this damn window where you have to configure everything, install the drivers and the boxes and so on. 
That's it for now. Uh, it was Philip back, and thank you for watching. Bye.